afternoon and welcome to Your Health, Your Future, and Your Choice. Miss Marie is here with us again and another great show with a lot of information, a lot of um, intuition and advice, and I don't know what other words I want to use, but to help us grow, to acknowledge what's within us, what are we listening to, what are we feeling, what should we be seeing, should we be seeing? What, what is it that we're missing? And today's show is about willful blindness. Are you making decisions that's blocking you to move to the next step, blocking you from making a d good decision? But before we get started, as always, we have feedback, questions, stories that have come to Miss Marie, and you can always reach her on Body Within Community, that's one word, Body within community at gmail.com. And we'll repeat that at the end of the show. But you can send your questions, your comments, um, any little stories you'd like to share with us, and maybe it'll, you'll be lucky enough to have it um, on our next show. So, welcome again, Miss Marie. What are the people saying? All right. So, the first one was on the integrative medicine show. So many options. Oh, they had no idea there was anything other than the basic doctor or whatever to do all the different things for them. Yeah. So they were really excited to learn that they had different ways they could look at healing for themselves. They, they have didn't, a choice. Yeah. Yeah. They have a lot of choice. Your health, your future, your choice. You yeah. have a lot more choice than you think. So they're taking it as food for thought and they were grateful for that. Nice. Yeah. Methods are madness. Um, I have somebody who's in physical therapy. They're in the second time for their back mm -hmm. and it hasn't worked. Um, they're very frustrated that they're not doing enough for them. Okay. So we had a lot of talks about the limitations of physical therapy and everything else and what can they do mm -hmm. because they've been avoiding that over and over again. Now they're willing to try things themselves because they realize that me medicine isn't going to save them. People have this idea in their head that once they go, they're supposed to be cured. Everybody mm. wants to be cured. cured. Yeah. There is no cure. Everything is to band-aid. Good. That's a very good yeah. analogy and an illustration. Yeah. So if you want to be cured, you have to really dig into yourself on can it be for starters? Mm -hmm. What's causing it? Mm -hmm. Are there weaknesses that you have to correct alongside with what other information you're getting? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but they're starting well, to break down the reality that it's not just you go to the doctor, you go for physical therapy and everything. And everything's better. all better. There, there is, apart from you showing up and doing whatever the physical therapist, that's the participation is actually much bigger than that. It's right. much broader. And I think um, that's that's a really good observation that we go there and I went, I did this. I should be better. Right. And there really is a lot more to that. And you and I both know that with the long journey coming back from thoracic right. um, uh, injuries, it's not as cut and dried and do one, do two, do three, and you're all better. See ya. Right. Yeah. Right. Reading between the lines, um, that show, they said they're catching themselves just reading the headlines. And then this person said they watched themselves share the information right after they read the headline. Oh. And then they saw me in their head saying, is that what the article really said? <laughs> oh, you're in somebody's funny. head? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> that's pretty cool, though, yeah, in a way. Yeah, it was pretty that, funny. That's that little voice. So they yeah. actually heard your voice in their head. Yeah, like, is that what you really read? Or are you just repeating mm -hmm. the top Or does headline? it just, or does and it, then you're starting is it a sufficient? Gossip? Yeah. yeah. I thought that was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that, that's pretty heavy, actually. Which means now, that person, all those little voices that you hear, you need to pay attention to them because they're actually mm -hmm. speaking to you. And Don't... it was just their body within coming forward, them mm -hmm. coming forward saying, okay, you know this. So, which is another thing that we're, we are um, taught or uh, dissuaded from listening to that voice in our head saying, mm, it's a little crazy, because you don't want to do Because you know that. everything right from wrong. It's the beliefs that get in the way and mm -hmm. keep telling you it's different. But this one is so strong. The more you foster it, it's harder. It's harder all the time to eat the garbage. Yep. It's harder all the time to not take time for yourself. Oh, it's harder because <laughs> now you know it's necessary versus 
yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You realize that you're creating your reality by not listening. Yep. So it gets louder and louder. It is. And guess what? La, 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 la <laughs> stops working. <laughs> it does. Because I can't la, la, la loud oh, enough no. anymore. <laughs> all right. Willful blindness. Yes. Let's talk about that. My favorite story. I think we all heard the joke 50 years ago, 40 years ago, about the person in the flood on the roof of the house. Mm -hmm. And then they send him two boats. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when he's ready to drown, he's like, God, why didn't you save me? I sent you two boats. Two boats. Yeah. Yeah. That's willful blindness in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How many times have we just said, con you, making a conscious decision, I'm not going to do that because either this feels better or so-and-so said that, and we've actually shot ourselves in the foot. Right. Made it harder instead of, at, at that time, considering it as an option. Right. Considering it as a choice right which again what does that affect it affects your future it affects your body it affects relationships right. why 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 don't we acknowledge it because it's too much work and i have a case study for that mm -hmm. and it was somebody who was very close to me um their body was in a little bit rough shape they were very weak physically and they had a physical job and they were on their third hernia repair in oh. 18 months oh and this person was very personal to me. And I said to them, I have a really bad feeling. You cannot just go get another surgery. You need to take the time out. You need to start doing some core. You need to get somebody to work with you, physical therapy. But the problem with medicine is abdominal surgeries don't get physical therapy. For whatever reason, the muscles in the belly aren't as good as the muscle in your leg. So you have to request it and you have to really push for it mm -hmm. because anything to do with the belly, they don't give you the rehab. That That's you insane. Need. That's your core. That is life. Same with women with C-sections. They cut your transverse abs, which is the support to your entire hip pelvis, mm -hmm. pelvic girdle, and you do not get physical therapy. Very and usually most women by five years, they have low back issues and all kinds of things. So anyway, I convinced this person by forcing them pretty much to go to the doctor. I went with, to, with them to every appointment. We talked to the doctor, they agreed it was a little extreme, three surgeries in 18 months, and my gut was on fire. So when my gut's on fire, I know somewhere down the road, if this doesn't correct, something bad's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I never thought about how bad it could be. So this is total willful blindness because I'm explaining it to this person and this person doesn't wanna do the physical therapy. They just wanna get back on with their life. Mm -hmm. So we get it all set up. They've agreed to take their six months off from work that they need to without lifting. They've agreed to do the PT. The family members are on board to support it. The doctor's on board to support it and everything else. The only one appointment I couldn't go to was the post-op appointment at four weeks. They went against it all, signed the release, and went back to work. <gasps> wow. At that point, the next hernia was so bad, the bowel comes through. It's like an alien coming out. Ooh. That one, the repair, got infected. Once it got infected, the whole abdominal cavity there was no more abs left. They got totally eaten by the infection. So there was no stability left in the core. And for me, that's a dramatic example of what happens when we keep pushing the envelope because we don't like the reality and mm -hmm. we willfully create a blindness to it all because we don't want it. But there's a reason why. Yeah, we need to take a step back going, okay, someone is telling me something's wrong. We do it with diabetes. We do it with heart disease. Mm -hmm. We do it with our exercise. You know, there's, I read a new study coming out out of the journal. I don't know if it was PubMed, but which one I was reading. Now, extreme exercise is not good for you. Did you know that? Um, These are common sense things. Well, yeah. I mean, if yeah. you do it all the time and you're abusing your body but and you're getting injured. But we need to do injured. a study to prove it. Oh. That's the problem oh. with willful blindness, because you should know already that it's not good yeah. for you. Why do you, you need someone else to tell you? Why do you need a study to tell you? Right, right. So it's very dangerous. You know, we had some friends over, and the gentleman's on five different meds. And he said something about taking his meds. I go, wow, that's a lot of meds. He goes, yeah, I need them. I go, oh, yeah, what's going on? So then he tells me, and they're all, they're all preventable. Mm -hmm. And they're all treatable, and you could get off the meds, like his blood pressure and his cholesterol and everything else. And I said, you do know you could make some lifestyle changes and maybe get off a few of those. He goes, no, I can't. Oh, and I'm dear. like, you absolutely can. Mm -hmm. 
He goes, no, my doctor would have told me that. I mean, you don't, you have to live in an absolute bubble. bubble. <laughs> <laughs> but people do, otherwise we wouldn't be, I mean, I was in Market Basket on Sunday and every aisle had a motorized cart in it and some had two. And I was just almost crying when I left the store. Because I'm like, what are we doing? What are we doing? What are we? How? What are we becoming as a society? What do we? That everything we totally is just the don't easiest want to way. accept the reality that we're creating our mm -hmm. own reality. That we're not living in reality. Mm -hmm. Reality states, this is not good. But you're creating it. You're willfully creating it to be blind, so you don't have to live in reality. You don't have to deal with it. You don't have to think about this it. This whole just body blind, within and energy forward. work is about sitting in reality because you have endless options when you're in reality. When you create a reality, you run out All of you options. All you have is that. Mm -hmm. You completely run out of options. And then it's very difficult to go against your conceived, perceived reality. How do you go backwards? That's even harder. And I, so I think people stay in that bubble. Wow, or because I, I know how many times I've done a couple of shows on the additives in food because I'm becoming more and more aware of them. I'll see a headline and I'll go research it and I'll be like, why? What's in there? And I read it and now I can't pick up anything at the grocery store without going, ugh, and put it back. And people are like, why'd you put that back? Well, because there's five seed oils in it. I was born with chemical sensitivities and allergies. Try to find shrimp without a ton of stuff in it. You think you're just picking up a bag of shrimp. Mm -hmm. You are not just picking up a bag of shrimp. You have to be very aware of what, they're, what they were fed, where they came no, from. No, you just have to look the, at the ingredients. Well, None of them say shrimp. They all say shrimp, this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. where's, most of them are chemical the additives. You just want shrimp. Yeah, I don't, I don't want, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of crazy. But anyway, that's a whole other direction we're going in. Okay, so to age gracefully, mm -hmm. we need to start coming out of the willful blindness state. Mm -hmm. And how do we do that? Start with the meditation. But the key is you have to want to see it. Mm -hmm. You have to want to see the things that are weakening your energy every day, that are weakening your health profile, that are weakening your emotional state, that's weakening your body. You have to want to. Mm -hmm. None of this works if you don't want to. You can make up an excuse every which way on why this cannot work because you don't want it to work. Correct. So you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're creating a side bubble to your original one. Right. Your own right. obstacle. Right. So, so wanting to. Talk just a tiny bit about how do you, how do you get from that bubble where you're considering it? How do you take, what, what would be a first baby step to seeing, well, that I'm wanting to get better and it's not as bad as I think. Say that again. I, yeah, so, so I probably didn't say that very well. But so you're in this bubble and you're just, you know, no, the doctor's right or, or I know what's best or that's too much work for me. What would be a baby step if it popped into your head? What would it be a baby step to try to meditate what would what would be a first okay, someone said step? to me the other day that their back was stiff mm -hmm. and i said are you stretching yes and i go what are you doing so she tells me the stretches i go have you ever tried and i've said this a million times but she was just in a different place where she was willing to listen this time have you ever tried to lay there and just wiggle around and move one leg across your body and one leg across your body the other way and see what it feels like and then just start moving to see what releases your back mm -hmm. And she just got really quiet. I can't do that. I need to know what stretches to do. And I said, but if you take the traditional method of stretching that we've evolved to with the physical therapy and the exercise is very linear. If you take yoga, it goes from every angle and twists your body all over. Why don't you do your own in the middle? By just laying there and letting your body guide you. Okay. And the next thing you know you start getting into that wave of energy, and then all of a sudden you're stretching your shoulder too because you realize your shoulder's attached to your hip and that's opening your back. And then you realize you wanna bend over and lay, lean on, you know, do like a child's pose. Your body's gonna take you to that next level. But people get, no, and she just kept saying, I don't know that I can do that. I go, you're choosing to not try because anybody can lay on the floor, 
take a couple deep breaths. I said, pretend you're drunk. When you're drunk, you can go that extra mile, right? <laughs> you can just go these places that you could never go before. Energy is right. the same way. Once you get caught in the flow of it, your body's doing all these crazy things you didn't know it could do to release itself. Interesting. It's really yep. cool. Well, actually, that makes sense. And, and the reason I asked you is because some people just don't have that first step. And I think that's an absolutely just fabulous illustration. And I'll take that just uh, one step more. So with my low back, you know, they say, oh, you know, put your two knees over this side, lay on the floor, put your two knees over that side. But that might hurt somebody. Exactly. And I found wow, that really pulls on one side more than the other. So what I did was, what you had said, and I, and I know better, but sometimes you have to relearn. Sometimes you have to adjust your little <laughs> self, you know, a ballet dancer my whole life. So it's like, okay, I can only do, no, no, just, just lay there. And so I put the two knees over and I'm like, oh, I really hate it on this side. So I just happened to stretch the top leg out a bit and I went, oh, that feels kind of cool. So I brought it back in. I went to the other side and I'm like, and I went, oh, I don't like it on. So I do one way on one side, one way on the other. And I'm like, okay, eventually it might change. But I opened myself to, I don't like it on that side. But in my head from my training all those years, I was saying, nope, you got to do five to this side and five to that side. And I undid it just out of, uh, just uh, out of happen chance that on this side, I like it with the leg out. Right. So it's that simple, people. It really is. And, well, and it's I'm, going to the next level inside yourself and mm -hmm. just listening to see what your body has to say. And you can still use the foundation of your other stuff. Right. And build on Tweak it. Tweak it. Build on it. Mm. But my posture for life brings you to start assessing. Does one go higher than the other? Can mm -hmm. you feel that movement? What are you going to do? Do you need to do some tissue work to open that hip versus the other that you have to get to know your body? Because, you know, I had somebody in the other day and the shoulder was coming from the hips were out, but it was coming from the mid back, the thoracics. And he had been jamming on the hips and jamming on the hips and the physical therapist was jamming on the hips and all along it was his mid back, his mid -back. but he did, wasn't symptomatic in the mid back. Mm -hmm. But if he had done a full body assessment, he would have realized that his mid back wasn't mobile and he would have done some stretches and it would have freed up his hips. Interesting. Because we're so interconnected because we stand upright. So everything has to balance on itself. Otherwise we'd fall over. Mm -hmm. So they all have these nerve patterns, these neuromuscular patterns that one offsets the other all the time. So if one's out, another one has to be out. Even though they tell you they're not all connected. They are all connected. They have to be or we would fall over. Correct. Any physics person would tell you that. We would fall over. But yet it doesn't translate over to the body and the... But medicine has segregated the body so much we've lost sight of that. Okay. And the alternative world doesn't do the physical piece. They do more. So that's the, almost a void there. It, it's a huge void, but that's where all of our discomfort comes if, from. If your hips aren't moving right and your torso's not doing this, when you walk and you're not squishing your organs, you're not digesting right. So you can fix your digestion all you want. It's not going to work if you're not in there churning those organs. Gotcha. You know, a lot of the yoga stuff teaches you about like their spinal twist. You sit upright and you turn all the way this way in a straight line because then the spine twists. It literally squeezes you out and squeezes those organs. Like squeezing out a sponge. Yes. Yes. And when your arms swing, when you walk, it does the same thing. But if you're not doing those things, you're going to end up with ill health over time. Mm -hmm. But we don't address any of that. And that's only a small piece. I'm not saying that is the answer because that's what you got to be careful of. We're so once one thing comes forward, that's everything's got to be it. this. Mm -hmm. Everything's got it's not. That's why we have, we have to, to learn to it. listen. Mm -hmm. Because one time it might be your emotional state that's locking your gut down because of how you deal with stress, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, Could be something you ate that really gets your digestion going that locks everything down, now your hips aren't moving right. So the more you get to know yourself, you're gonna know when those things come into your space and that are screwing you up. Well, it, it made me just think of um, perhaps a show for in the future of our organs and uh, how the muscles play into them, well, a little know, bit of where they are. Well, you know, that's a tough one because it is. it's not, there's no, it's only going to be an intuitive 
show because we don't know that yet. Right. But what I'm saying is if you, not to put down anybody, but you know, here's your heart, here's your lungs. These are kind of the muscles that are Mm -hmm. near it. You know, do this. Can you feel that? Where do you feel that? Do you see how they're connected? Just a a, I was thinking, so people don't say, I I didn't know those parts were in there. I didn't know that's where it sat. You know, it's so crazy. I had somebody come in because he's in his low 30s and he's pinching off a ureter and his kidneys and his kidney was failing. And they told him that he was gonna lose his kidney because he's not draining. That he, and they could see in the x-ray that he was pinching it. Mm-hmm. And I knew him personally and I told my daughter and she goes, mom, can I get him in? And I'm like, sure. And I looked at him and I said, you gotta stop squatting the way you're squatting. That simple. I straightened, straight out, out, told him. straightened yeah. him out, showed him what he needed to do. I showed him how to do all his exercises without crunching and pinching on his abdominal cavity, about lengthening his body. He's stronger, he's leaner, and he's not losing a kidney. Because we don't have anything in medicine that would know how to do that other mm-hmm. than just, and it wasn't a surgical intervention, so then we don't know what to tell you. Correct. But if you take a little bit of the yoga philosophy, you take a little bit of the Western philosophy, you take a little bit of the acupuncture philosophy and, the, and you mix them all together mm-hmm. along with the energy piece, you've got this great thing. And you're in charge. Because it's all intuitive and your body's telling you, take a little of this, a little of that, a little of that, and mix it all together. But we're so linear that we're not getting our answers because we want to stretch our legs only one way. Mm-hmm. And that's not always the answer. And I'm not telling people they should go crazy and try all these things and spend all this money and get all these practitioners to do it because, again, when you expect someone else to do, to do it, it, you're, you're going to get really a limited the... perspective and they can't read your body right. as well as and you And you're can. not doing the work. It's, it's not being initiated by you, so where's the learning piece of that? Again, you're still trying to get a Band-Aid. Right. Wow. You know, I'm very blessed with my grandson. He's 16 now, and he was born without his large and small intestines attached. So he had emergency surgery the first day he was born. So he has abdominal scarring and stuff, and his torso goes out all the time, you know, because he pulls down. And he goes to the gym with me, and we have a blast because I have a lot of the same weaknesses. But he realizes that if I don't keep my body straight Mm -hmm. because I don't use a part of my belly there, that my hips go to one side, I can't use my pec anymore, and my basketball game is skewed. So for him, it's all about his basketball game. Okay. (laughs) So he's got a vested interest here. A huge vested (laughs) interest. But he realizes that it's just going to be a lifelong thing for him, and that's okay. But if he doesn't, his body's going to go in another direction. He's going to blow out a knee. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a rotor and rotator or whatever, but he's wise enough to know that I need to keep an eye on what's going on. I need to self-assess. I need to understand when I do my exercises what they should feel like. So it's truly a life journey. It's not just one thing at one time. I have yet to meet anybody who has a perfect, Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the seasons change, the weather changes, the temperature changes. So why wouldn't your body change? I have come to me that throw out their backs because they're over yoga Is that a word? (laughs) Oh, I guess. It's a new word, people. You heard it here. You know, over because, yoga yeah, because <laughs> they think the yoga has to be all these crazy stretching, but their body's not equipped to do it. Yep. They don't have the core yet to do it. Interesting. So, you don't, there's not one thing, and that's my point. You know, the more you get to know yourself, the more you connect to that infinite piece of you, that energy piece that you know so much, because we do know so much. Mm-hmm. My days are awesome. Because every day I'm getting stronger. I mean, I'm going to be 59 this year, and every day I'm getting stronger. I'm stronger than most women in their 30s. Who can say that? Not a lot of people. I would be disabled right now because I was so physically limited on my right side. It had completely collapsed. I mean, I want everybody to have what I have. Yep. Well, I'm but getting people there because you know want it. how I was two years ago before I came to you. Yep. I'm still, so maybe going on three. Yep. I was so locked down that I, I didn't even know, I forgot how to use my arm. I forgot, yeah. literally I couldn't do the most simplest things and. But it has to yeah, come from, from us. Right. It has to, and I can only guide you. People want me to be the doer. I'm a facilitator of what you're capable of mm-hmm. and how open you are is how capable. Like Heidi, I talked about her in the last show. She was very open, so her potential was huge. It increased. Yeah. Yeah. She was in survival mode. When you're in survival mode, a lot can happen. I too. 
Well, all right. So let's, um, how can people contact you again? Uh, bodywithincommunity at gmail.com. All right. And what is the website where they can um, find out about the meditation? Marie Notig, K-N-O-E-T-I-G dot com. Dot com. So you can find out about meditation. And my book's on Amazon, The Missing Piece to Health and Aging Gracefully. It's a great book. Believe me, you should get it. Keep it right by your bedside. So again, thank you as always. Um, I can't wait till next month. It's, it's getting more exciting <laughs> okay. because we're moving faster. And I don't mean faster, but we're moving along and learning so much more and becoming um, comfortable with talking about this, mm -hmm. of reaching out to each other and not being afraid of what that little next step is or a little bit of experimentation or just a little bit of thought change. Yeah, I love it. Thank you again. Thank you. All right, everybody. We will see you next time. Make sure to share, share, share these shows and send your comments and questions to Marie. You can always reach out to me as well, but she's got the better answers. But uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much for joining us.